Welcome everybody to Funeral Nation episode 225. That's Jeff the Funeral Commander Harbison. I'm Ryan Thogmartin and this is the only weekly news show in the death care profession. If we don't talk about it, it's probably not relevant. That's true. And uh, we usually have a lot to talk about. In fact, I heard something uh, interesting last couple years of two senior statement statesmen in our business. And one of them told the others, he said, well, your opinion only matters if you're relevant. So uh, I think our show's relevant and we're not throwing as much opinion as we are the news, but we'll put right. that out there every once in a while too. Speaking of relevant, CNJ Financial. Uh, I just got back from a meeting we had last week. We are just blowing things up, excited. Best quarter we've ever had in history. And it's not all due just to COVID. It's because of our operations, um, mm -hmm. what our people are doing internally. And when I say internally, that means from home because uh, we had this big empty office and it was tough not to see all the uh, people uh, uh, CLSs that are in there. It's almost like a huge family. So we're working really hard to hopefully get together for the Christmas holiday because we miss each other. But anyway, this won't happen unless CNJ's there with Jamie and all the crew. KK, shout out. We're going to have them uh, on a show with you, right? Yep. We're going to have a seminar in the next couple of weeks, so we'll have that ginned up so shortly. But let's go ahead and run that promotional. We may be the largest insurance assignment company in the funeral profession, but that doesn't mean we've lost touch with our roots. Here in Rainbow City, Alabama, our priorities still come down to a welcoming smile and a handshake that says we keep our promises. With all the tools and technologies that assure blazing fast turnaround, what really matters is much more old school. Personal responsibility, integrity, relationships, and the pride that comes from hearing yet another client say, you came through for us when it mattered. CNJ eliminates the challenges that funeral homes have in processing insurance death claims. If cash flow is vital to your business, welcome home. So Ryan, uh, speaking of uh, traveling and stuff, I've been on a couple so far this year. Uh, you've been out a little bit this year. Yep. Um, we're seeing cancellations. We have ICCFA coming up soon, which is a uh, virtual attended uh, conference. And you and I are actually going to be together this coming week. Uh, it takes a conference for the two of us to meet only yeah. because we're 20 miles apart. We can't get <laughs> yeah, together. Right. Ain't this weather awesome? Welcome, bro. Yeah, thank you. It's, it's perfect. See, the part of the conversation uh, we were having offline just a few minutes ago is, you know, once again, we're getting back into conventions. Do we go? Do we not go? Are people going to attend? From my vantage point, for what I've seen so far, uh, funeral professionals, uh, especially directors, really want to get back out. They really want to go somewhere. They really want to participate and see each other. As more of us get immunized, then I think we'll see more. However, uh, we have to consider the locations that are being chosen. Uh, are they going to open all the restaurants? Yeah. You know, what are we going to do? And then we get back to, uh, we'll, we'll interview Tom Anderson in a few minutes, but have we, similar to consumers, we as uh, suppliers, vendors, been taught a new way of doing things mm -hmm. that we don't necessarily need the convention piece? So I'm going to open that door to you because that's a tough question. It is a tough question. Like, look, and, and I think you and I both... I don't think I know you and I, but we, we value the, the associations. We support the associations. This is not a knock on, on the associations by any means. It's simply looking at the way that we have adapted over the last 13 months. And we've talked about it heavily. If you were positioned well, controlling your own narrative, not having conferences has really had zero effect on your business. You guys are booming. We're scaling. We've had our best year ever last year and, and no signs of slowing down growth. All of it continues without attending a single conference. But we also are very intentional in the online and engaging and having conversations as well. So you're kind of in one of two ships. Either you had the sales team on the road and you depended on the in-person or 
you didn't necessarily depend on the in-person you had it but you also had the structure to be able knowing that online was important and but we have changed we have even companies that hadn't embraced online have now embraced online they're creating their own content they're putting out their own narrative they have their own email list they're doing the things where you know yeah, I, I look at ICCFA, we're exhibiting, we're supporting the association. I'm not supporting mm -hmm. the association and exhibiting with the hopes that we're gonna get more business. If by chance we have a connection that leads to something great, that'll be icing on the cake, we're doing it out of more support. But I also go, if I'm a, if I'm a new company, is it beneficial for me to pay $1,200 to attend a virtual conference or should I just put that $1,200 into some sort of marketing ad spend online where I can target the right funeral home? That's a, that's a viable conversation. I, you and I both have been asked multiple times about NFDA. NFDA currently right now in its current climate, they've pushed booth registration out a couple months. So I think that there's some unknowns that they're, they're dealing with, but right now, it appears that it, if it happened today, it could most likely be in person. Um, but that then asks the question from a vendor and supplier standpoint, one, if you're going, at what extent do you go from like booth size and how much money do you dump in it and people, are there gonna be enough attendees that wanna come to support being there if the exhibit hall is empty or like you said restaurants hotels what are the restrictions what are the guidelines there's a lot of kind of unknowns i think we're all itching to to have some in-person interactions and those kind of micro gatherings like we called them or or micro events have produced good attendance um but that's a, a small regional segment that's not necessarily the the population at large we're not necessarily seeing big gatherings happening in certain states. Um, we are seeing it more East Coast, certain gatherings and things happening. So I don't know, man, there's a, there is a lot. You and I are part of a uh, supplier networking event this coming week where we've got 60 companies coming in. And, you know, there's a lot of excitement around that. But that, again, that's vendors. That's not funeral professionals gathering. So, you know, a lot of vendors have still been traveling and doing the normal to an extent. So I don't know, there's a lot of unknowns. I, I want in person and I think you do too, just for the handshake side of it. But from a business sense, are we, are we losing business by not having conferences? And in our experience, it's a, it's a hundred percent a no. Right. And I think that's, uh, as you share with, uh, the folks just or funeral nation just a moment ago the foresight companies and live oak bank are, are sponsoring suppliers and vendors getting together this week to have a conversation and i am quite certain that this very subject may be yeah. one of the major uh topics there so i'm excited that we'll be able to bring out some information and share um with the funeral nation world if you will uh, some of the thoughts and processes behind it is, is now the time to change. You know, we've already changed. Is now the time to dictate, hey, this is how we want to see it done in the future, rather being dictated to. Because we, as you just said, um, we're not unsupportive of organizations, but we also have uh, ROIs, return on investments, where we were able to shift some of those funds we did before, and we did more business. Yeah. So where's the nexus of that uh, support and and gathering come together? So anyway, I'm excited. We've got uh, Tom Anderson coming up and uh, let's go ahead and roll that interview. Well, we have our, our favorite recurring market report gentleman with us today, Tom Anderson, Funerals Directors Daily. Uh, Tom, welcome back for... Uh, I don't know, the third or fourth time, maybe? Yeah, I, I, I would guess it's been almost a year and we're doing it every quarter. It's it's actually nice to hear that I'm somebody's favorite something because uh, usually you're in the top <laughs> of something, but that's nice to hear, nice to hear. No, we appreciate it. You do uh, quite a bit of analysis uh, that you have on Funeral Director Daily. And we think it's nice that uh, people understand what's going on in our profession as far as uh, our public companies are concerned, which are pretty much indicative of what's going on in the private sector 
and uh, also could be a little predictive of what our future may look like. So, Tom, we're going to turn it over to you and uh, you share with us your information for this past quarter. Okay, thank, thanks, Jeff. And I, I think you're exactly right. I followed public companies in our business for a long time, especially when I owned and operated a funeral home, because I would look at their numbers and their ratios and their average per sale and things like that and try to translate it into my own business and, and compare how I'm doing with them. Um, within the last 45 days or so, almost all of the companies have reported their end of year results. And um, I keep track of eight different companies. Four of them are traditionally in the funeral home service or cemetery service business. You know, that's uh, Service Corp International, Carriage Services, Stonemore, and Park Lawn. It's been an interesting year as they've had the same ride and came <laughs> through it. You know, a year ago at this time, we were wondering, what's going to happen to these companies with COVID starting, people passing away in droves, but nobody having funerals. They all took the same certain roller coaster ride. And you can read it at the end of the year that they lost revenues per service. They're having tons of calls, but they eventually learned how to, whether it's Zoom funerals or do other things, get some of that service back. And they came out of it indicative. Uh, all of them, all of them, quite frankly, did more services than they thought they were going to do. And they probably did less revenue per case, but the number of services was more indicative they came out with some really, really pretty good financial numbers. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, it's interesting. Uh, we're at the point now that those reports were from the first quarter. And now uh, we're starting to hear and see and realize some slowdown. Uh, have you had any data on that at this point? Yeah. Uh, I, I can tell you that uh, Funeral Director Daly just did an article that uh, talks about nursing home deaths and, and care center deaths and how they're really going down. Matter of fact, the article is maybe we're starting to come out of this, you know, since we've been vaccinated. What's going to be interesting is the second quarter numbers, which would be the uh, April, May, June, which will come out probably sometime in July, because that's when the first COVID wave hit last year, where they had tons of numbers, but lower sales. Mm -hmm. Right. But What's going to happen? Are we going to see the numbers be less in, in volume? But what's going to be happening with their sales? It's going to be. Yeah. I, I think. Yeah. It's, I think it's going to be interesting when we get back to the last quarter, uh, or when we get to the April, May, June numbers, and how they correspond to the last quarter of 2019, because that was the last non-COVID numbers. And I think it's going to be really, really interesting in July when we get those to see what's happened in funeral service over that 18 month time period. Have cremations really grown? Have revenue for services fell? Or are they pretty close? Yeah. It's interesting because, in some respects, this, uh, I'll just call it the last year, we've taught uh, and made uh, consumers adapt to a new way of funerals. And so when people have lost loved ones during this period, are they going to continue with, hey, you know what, we'll do a service later. Uh, we can have a small service now and a party going, you know, some type of commemoration at, at another point. Do we still want to use Zoom? I mean, because there are still people uh, in certain parts of this country or states that haven't let up very much from, you know, uh, the mask mandates and that sort of thing. So I, I, I think you're correct. And what I'm looking uh, as well, and you mentioned it, that, you know, last year we had a number of spikes in deaths, but at the same period we dropped in revenue per call. Now that we are, we're changing, is that revenue per call remaining stagnant lower or are we surging ahead? Because in essence, that's what we're after. It doesn't matter how many calls you do, it's how much revenue per call, yeah. and even more so, how much do you keep, correct? That, that's exactly true. And, and, and I also think, you know, human beings are really creatures of habit. 
And our habits have changed in this pandemic year on whether it's going to the movies or going out to the, to eat or somebody, how they arrange funerals. And we're going to see if those habits are just um, something that just happened for the pandemic year, or have they changed people's feelings about these type of things forever? And I think that's a big question in funeral service is how do people feel about these things nowadays? Correct. I have another question. Uh, who was uh, one of the, or who are some of the clear winners uh, for the first quarter of this year? When I say winners that really stood out that did well. Well, we'll actually talk. The reports we're talking about is like fourth quarter last year that we got in the first quarter. Right. Um, I will tell you to date, and I just checked on it, the funeral is an industry, which I call the death care index, which we cover these eight stocks, has not traditionally been moving along with the rest of it. But January through now, it has moved at an almost 20% increase, which wow. is really, really good for this, the first quarter of the year. If you go back to last year, you know, the, the funeral service, cemetery companies, all about the same. They rode that wave. Matthews, uh, their memorialization segment, which is Aurora Caskets, they've sold more caskets. And they do believe there's a real pent up demand to go out and buy monuments. And they have a big monument company. So, but people haven't been able to go out to the cemeteries. Um, Security National Financial Corporation, I see you're wearing their shirt basically with CNJ. They had a blowout quarter. Um, again, their funeral homes were good, but their financial services business with mortgages and funeral financing was incredible. Um, Hill and Brandt, casket sales are up. And Assurant, uh, the other public company in the insurance business, they announced that they're going to exit the pre need business and have actually uh, signed a letter to sell their pre need services. So um, I think all of the funeral service companies and death care companies were pretty pretty good winners for 2020. You know, it's interesting too, is that this segment uh, up until a, a couple of years ago, actually when Ryan and I started uh, Funeral Nation, uh, we nobody looked at our, our industry for the most part when I say institutional investors, those sort of things. And now we're starting to see where those institutional investors, especially for uh, companies wanting to uh, buy out segments of our business from the IT. We've seen that. Now we're starting to see that the death care, as you call it, the death care index, um, yep. I believe more people are paying attention to it mm -hmm. simply because of the pandemic. And they're saying, hey, wait a minute, there's a future here. And of course, I've, I've banged this pot a thousand times in the last year. But uh, yes, we lived through a pandemic, but now we're also into where we have one of the largest uh, generations ever of baby boomers who are moving into, if you will, the death funnel. And by the sheer amount of numbers, nothing to do with anything else, it's just more people were born during those baby boomers uh, years, right? Yep. They're going and to it, start dying off. That's actually, that's actually a, a panacea too to this revenue per case dropping is that we're going to buy the 2030s, you know, have such high numbers of deaths that may not even matter because the funeral homes that get those deaths are going to get to that, uh, that number where they can be very, very profitable. Uh, which, which is interesting to note when you talk about the institutional investors, even outside the public enterprise system, um, like foundation partners is a private enterprise, mm -hmm. but they're, money backers access holdings right. has announced that they went out and raised 630 million dollars partially to go out and acquire funeral homes so there is that investment from the outside coming into the death care business yeah i agree it's an interesting time yep. it's a it's a good time to be in the business you just have to in my estimation be smart about it uh it'll be interesting again you're right tom this this current quarter when it comes out july august somewhere through there we start seeing it then we're going to really be able to dive in and look and see where we are at this point you know last yep. year was an anomaly what's going to happen now for the future i think i think the numbers and you're exactly right that the numbers at the end of 2020 kind of tell us that covid caused 
maybe 12 to 15 percent more deaths in America during the year. Right. And the revenue from the people I've talked to in regional chains to public documents for those companies, the revenue per case probably fell about one to eight percent in those places. So more deaths by 12 percent revenue is maybe down one to eight percent. Um, interesting story. Yeah. Well, uh, fortunately, I know that we can count on you when that story comes about, and we'll go back to our analysis. That will probably be somewhere around uh, Fuel Nation 240-ish. About you think, 12 Ryan? weeks, I assume, about 12, you know, 12, 12, 13 weeks and a quarter. Yeah, so there you go. Yeah, I, just, so I, I always look forward to getting your guys' text that says, hey, we're ready for another update, and uh, I've Try to be, try to give you what I can. Well, you do a great job. It. I read uh, every day. I read the daily. Uh, in fact, today was pretty uh, interesting with uh, the article you wrote about the the church reach out, and uh, right. I actually responded that uh, that's a declining market. We just heard last week. Exactly. You know, you know what's this, interesting about that? That's a whole another deal about trying to get church funerals. It appears that some of these companies will give churches a little financial incentive to do it so it is that social networking though like happened with uber and happened with grubhub if you can get the social networking of a group to come to your funeral home um who knows what might happen that's it uh that's uh the sector of this guy right here he knows exactly how to get that done <laughs> well, yeah they need to talk to ryan that's it well, we thank you so much, Tom, for coming on. Thank I know you. you probably got a golf round coming up this afternoon. I'm playing at 220. It's a whopping 63 degrees in Minnesota on this uh, April. Uh, day. We, we we call that a cold snap here. <laughs> yeah, so. that's freezing. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna have to get you out here in the blazing sun and play sometime. If you don't melt, you'll really enjoy it. All right, I appreciate you guys having me. Thanks for everything and. Uh, Take care. God bless. Have a, have a great week coming up. All right. All right. Thank you, you too, Tom. Tom. Thank, Thank you, you again. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Well, Jeff, good stuff on this. Uh, there's a lot of talking points here. Uh, we may have stirred the pot on a number of different fronts, and I think that that's good. Like, the, the, the conversation has to happen, right? It's real. It's reality. Um, again, you say it. Uh, about every two shows, we don't make the news. We just report it. Th this is the conversation that's happening, you know? And you know, we're in a position to be able to facilitate it and, and make it happen more widespread because these are important conversations. I agree with you. So uh, everyone stay tuned. We'll be back with you next week. 226 will actually be at the same spot. We're mm -hmm. right now uh, within a very similar, uh, at least area code, not necessarily zip code, but uh, literally we'll be together. And I'm excited to talk to some of the attendees and get some reactions uh, of what their thoughts are toward the end of that conference. In the meantime, have a great time on your end of the world. Looks like we've yeah. got a uh, little heat coming back, yes, which sir. I'm ready for, but it's uh, absolute perfection here. You got it. I see the same. Okay, brother. <laughs> have a great week, and I'll see you in a couple days. Out here. Get you out of here.